welcome to another Hearthstone live stream. <laughs> yep, that's what we got to start. Uh, first, I wanted to introduce ourselves, I guess. Sure, yeah. Uh, this is Eric Dodds, the lead designer of Hearthstone. And this is Ben Brode. He's the other half of the design team on Hearthstone. Welcome. And today, we're talking about the Forge. Yep, the Forge. And, and I guess the first uh, piece of news we have about the Forge is we're changing the name. That's right. It's no longer called the Forge. Yep. Uh, we decided to change it to the Arena. And uh, we changed it because in our internal testing, uh, people sometimes get confused that it might be our, our crafting mode where you go and create cards. Yeah, and, and crafting mode's awesome, and we want people to go there, but we don't want them to go there thinking, oh, oh wait, wait, I'm, am I playing this one-on-one -on -one mode? Am I crafting a card? Right. It, it was just confusing, and we wanted people to know what they were getting into. So the arena makes it very clear it's a competitive, at least one-on-one -on -one environment to play games. An exciting place to go. That's right. Uh, now, you may uh, not have heard about uh, what used to be called the Forge, and now is the arena before, uh, so we'll give you a quick overview of kind of what to expect in the arena. Yep, so... In the arena, what you can expect is when you are first enter the arena, you are presented with three random heroes, and you choose one of those three heroes to build your deck around that, that you're going to make your picks after that uh, with that specific hero. Right. And uh, once you've chosen your hero, we'll give you uh, 30 choices uh, of three cards each, then you can choose which card you want to add to your deck, and then once you've done that 30 times and you have a 30-card deck, you'll play against other players who have done the same thing. Yeah, and those cards that you're choosing along the way are randomly generated so it's you don't know what your deck's going to look like right. at all it's oh are these going to be rares or epics or commons or am i going to get five of the same type of card it, it could be anything and that's right. one of the things that's so exciting about the arena is you just don't know what's going to happen when you enter it and because your collection of cards doesn't play into the picks that you get at all it's kind of an even playing field the people you're playing against doesn't matter how big their collections are they've gone through the same process you have and you're playing against uh, them in the same playing field. Yep, it's totally level, and, and it's got this exciting picking process at the same time. It's, it's well, it's my favorite way of playing. I love the arena. So uh, we changed a few more things about the arena. Uh, one of the things we changed is that uh, as you go through the arena, uh, you may have heard before that you keep the cards. Now you don't keep the cards, and we did that because uh, we wanted to make it uh, really an easy choice and not have this tension that sometimes happens when you yeah. keep the cards, whether you want to choose it for your collection or for your arena deck and trying to make the best arena deck possible. We want you just to make the best arena deck possible, not to worry about, do I have two copies of this, or should I, should I take this, or... It's yeah, we just wanted that pure experience. Like, I'm building an awesome arena deck, and that, that's all right. it's all about. And, and, and there's actually other reasons we made the change. I mean, uh, one of the reasons we made the change as well was when we were deciding what cards we presented with you as you were sort of playing through the arena, when it was... Uh, a set of cards you were keeping, we had to make sure that the set of cards was exactly the same as the cards you might get if you open that many packs. Right. And so we were forced to go, okay, we have to have this many commons, this many rares, this is the distribution, which is awesome in packs, but in the arena it was kind of forcing our hands and wasn't letting us make the most exciting experience we could. Right, so now you could see uh, a set of picks that are some basic, some expert, you might see more rares than before. Yeah, it, it's just, it's we can make a... a the perfect arena experience, right. I guess. And, and part of this is that you, we no longer, uh, you no longer get into the arena by spending unopened packs. Uh, if you yep. ever have open packs, you can open them and get the cards that are inside. Uh, but in order to get in the arena, you can uh, buy in with gold or with, with real money. Uh, but packs, you, you never have to have that worry, like, should I open this or spend it in the arena? You always open your packs. Yeah, yeah there was this horrible tension that I'd, I'd have a bunch of packs, and I'd go, well, I want to play in the arena, so I want to save them, but I want to open them, because opening packs is kind of... Right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's not kind of awesome. It's totally awesome. <laughs> uh, well, there's a couple more things we've changed, but I think we'll just jump into the arena and uh, show you how it all works and, and uh, show you maybe kind of some of the rewards, things we've done at the end of the uh, run. Sounds great. All right. Well, let's start talking. Let's, let's stop talking and start playing. <laughs> all right. The arena. So this is our first decision point here. Huh. So we're presented with three heroes, and they all have such specific powers and sets of cards that they would bring along with them that yep. this is going to be a tough choice. Warlock, warrior, or mage? So in this environment, I, I mean, mage is always exciting because mage is a class that has so much control of the tabletop, sure. and, and that's actually pretty good in a... Uh, arena environment. Yeah, and this has got secrets, which are fun to watch, so that could be that could be fun. Yeah, so I like the, the mage. Uh, now, the warlock uh, 
has a great hero power specifically for Forge, I think. That uh, hero power lets you draw additional cards. Uh, sometimes your cards are not as good in the Forge because you didn't build a custom deck, and so that could be a great hero power to go with. It is, although if we're facing a early rush deck, then it's going to be a little bit tougher because the Warlock's hero power actually does damage to the Warlock as they're sure, drawing cards. So once we get a little low on health, that's, that's a little dicey. And then, of course, there's the Warrior, which is great for the long game. Yes. Because you, you're providing armor, but you don't have that card draw or tactical gameplay control. Uh, you know, in, in this build, this is our current development build that we're showing off today, and uh, there's actually at least one kind of uh, change to one or two of the cards in, in the mage environment, so maybe we should show off the mage and see if we get any of those cards. I suppose people might want to be uh, seeing some of the changes we've been making right. to the mage, so that sounds great mage to me. Mage it is, Jaina Proudmoore. And this is our first choice. Whoa, very interesting. Uh, well, uh, Vaporize is great, I think, because uh, it's removal. But removal in Forge, I don't know if it's better or worse because it's less likely to see as many legendaries or as many giant creatures. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's more of a late game. If we could craft an entire game deck around uh, Vaporize, it would be a great card. But I don't know if it's as strong in this environment, whereas I know I'm always a big fan of the Stampeding Kodo that destroys a random enemy with a, a two or less attack yeah, when it comes into play. Yeah, the needs dollar on mages and acolytes of pain. Oh my good, it's so good against spell power Now, Knife Juggler, if we can get Mirror Image, is really strong. Oh, that's true as well. But uh, in general, I, I, I like my Knife Juggler maybe better with Shaman or Paladin, who could guarantee to get minions with their hero powers. And, and this is actually one of the interesting things about the arena, in that this is our very first pick, so we're going to be making choices that are going to be determining later choices. Right. And we don't really know what's coming, so if we thought, hey, we were going to get a lot of mirror images and, and murlocs, the knife juggler would be a great choice. Let's, uh, let's go with the Kodo. I, I am totally sold. I, I, the Kodo is a, a, a great pick. Uh, interesting. Well, I, just straight off the bat, I always respond well to the Silvermoon Guardian. I like that card a lot. The, now, the Dark Scale Healer is really strong. I mean... Uh, it heals everybody. And, but, and it's great if you have a bunch of cards out. It just it can totally turn the game around sure. once you have a bunch of things on the table. But we um, already just took a, cost, a card that costs five. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. I was thinking that really we can't... It doesn't matter that much. But, uh, but I, I tend to agree. I like the Silver Moon Guardian. Costs four. We'll probably get a two for one out of it. Sure. It seems... Ooh, another rare pick. Uh, I like it. Well, this is interesting. I, the Defender of Argus is just a great card. The Violet Teacher can be very good in a mage deck. Uh, uh, assuming we get enough spells, right. and that's the big question here. Are we going to get the spells to power the Violet But the teacher? character mage is just a really solid 4-3 for the 3-mana, three and if it gets secrets, it's just, I think that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of tempting to take the Carantor Mage because there's so many secrets in Mage that if we get that combo, it's, it's pretty strong. But the Defender of Argus, on the other hand, is, is powerful as well. All so these cards are good. This is a tough choice. Yeah. Uh, well, I could go. I probably am leaning towards either Defender of Argus or Kieran Tormage. I'm one. leaning toward the Kieran Tormage. I think uh, I have a little bit of different slant on this sometimes. I like it because it, it's pretty fun. Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, here's our opportunity to take our first secret with Mirror Entity, and that's a fun one. Yeah, so, well, uh, as a whole, we can look at this and look at the Ice Lance and go, Ice Lance is great if we're building a Frost deck, but it's so hard to make sure that, that we have enough Frost to power it. Right, so I think yeah. that one's probably out Although of Although we might regret it if we get... Oh, we'll probably it. totally regret <laughs> it, but you know, that's sort of how the arena runs. Yeah. Well, Polymorph is, is strong. Uh, again, I don't know how many giant minions we're going to see that we really want to Polymorph. Yeah, I think a Mirror point, Entity. And Mirror Entity, I, again, I'm coming from that that would be pretty fun sure, to, yeah. to play. Sure, yeah. Oh, uh, I wonder if there's any choice here. Yeah, I mean, Flame well, Strike is just It's so good wonderful. at turning the game around. I mean, yeah. if we're already winning, it, it doesn't do you a lot. But if, if, if you're in trouble, I totally that agree. can just I, turn I, I the game on its Questing Adventure is tempting, uh, but I think Flame Strike is probably the best. Card Questing Adventure would be good, again, if we could count on getting a lot of early cheap minions. But if you already look at the, the things we've chosen, they're already three, four, oh. five. So to start, that's, we that's, don't have a lot of cheap. It's true. We're getting a little high, especially after we take Flame Strike here. Hey, there's one of the new, the new changed cards, Fireball, and now costs four mana. Yeah, so that's a little the, better. Yeah, we were looking at the mage, and we really wanted the mage to be the king of blowing stuff up. That's right. And, and making the Fireball cheaper really helps the mage be the king of making things go boom. Uh, well, okay. or, or queen, really, I, since it's Jaina. But. I like Fireball a lot. I mean, I think that card's great. I like Polymorph a lot. But our curve is already starting to slant a little higher. This is our mana curve here at the bottom. It shows you... Uh, how many cards of each cost that you've taken so far, and we don't have anything at one or two yet. Not that, not that uh, uh, 
we're not going to get any later. Yeah. But if we take Fireball here, we might have to prioritize lower drops later on in the drag. Yeah, uh, I, I see that. And Fairy there. Dragon really is a, a strong card. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not quite as strong in the arena environment because it's good against direct removal, but yeah. there's lots of minions in this. But on the other hand, Fireball. Yeah. You know, Fireball. All right, Fireball. Do, do I need to say more than that? It's Fireball. <laughs> We're a mage, it's Fireball. Oh, well, here's some cheap cards. Oh, uh, and I like all three of them, actually. This is going to be a tough choice. Well, I, I definitely feel like we need a minion to play early on in the game. So I would I would prefer to choose the, the Murloc or the Worgen here. Okay. I, I already played the it's Fireball card, so I guess I can't do that with <laughs> it's Arcane Missile. So we'll let that one roll. So the question is, do we want Charge or do we want Stealth? Now, Stealth is great. Uh, you're gonna, well, they both guarantee an attack, really, because stealth, you're probably going to live until the next round, and charge, you don't even need to, you attack right away. I kind of like the one drop better than the charge minion. Charge minions are great, but since we're already a mage, we already have one point of directed damage. Well, if, if they have a three a health minion, though. And, and we have four everything. mana, it's true. I mean, I lean towards the infiltrator, but... but I lean towards the murloc. Okay, so how do we resolve we can, we can this? We fight to the death. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I, I went with Fireball last time, so make yes. your choice. Murloc. We don't Murloc have to fight to the death. Oh, an uh, epic. And a Murloc World Eater. That's true. Well, this is this is interesting oh, because... Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't know what to do with this. We already have one Murloc, so we could... Um, uh, we could pick another Murloc and, and try and go that route for this. Uh, or, we've already got Kirtor Mage. We could take the Spellbender, uh, and uh, we could go more secrets. Yeah, and I'm, I like the secrets. The Spellbender is a little bit too focused, I think. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, I mean, for, for uh, it might end up being useless against our opponent. It's true. I, I mean, it will soak up any kind of targeted removal and any buffs that they play on their own minions. So uh, I think, I think I really, it, it could be useful, but it could, you're right, be completely useless. And, and I'm going to stop for a minute because we actually have a question oh, about... Great. Uh, are we just picking a card rotation and we can sort of explain how the deck building oh, right. of it works? You want to you want to Sure, it? sure. I can <laughs> I can jump right in. Um, so uh, the card rotation these cards are just randomly being put up here. Right. And so the first pick would be like, "Oh, it's a common pick. It's going to randomly throw three common cards up there right. and we're just going to pick one." So it really could be, we could be seeing tons of specific cards. We could see an all secret version of this or six fireballs or right. you know, we really have no idea what we're yep, going to see. So it's, it's random. random. Each pick, yeah. And each time we're picking that card, it's going into our deck and we're going to be picking 30 cards. And once we pick those 30 cards, we don't get to change them from then on out. It's those are the 30 cards we're running with. That's right. Uh, well, this is, this is a tough point, kind of a, a decision point for our deck is do we focus more Murloc. Uh, we could take the face manipulator, but uh, it's better when you have a lot of giant, really worthwhile minions to copy, or if your opponent's playing a lot of giant minions, which we may not see in the. In the yeah, and I lean towards either the manipulator or the world leader. I think the spellbender's out because it's just a little bit too oh, narrow really? for me, even though we have the Kirin Tor. Right, well, I'll tell you, I would have picked the spellbender, but I think given we've already taken one Murloc, let's just dive right in. Okay, Murlocs, it is. And we're gonna we're gonna see. If we and can we will see. Whoa! I think it pays off. Murloc Tide Color. We could really start going Murlocs here. Except that it's funny. Just one pick ago, this would have been easy because right. I would have looked at Vaporize and gone, Vaporize is awesome. Although I know you're a big fan of the Arcane Golem. Yeah. Well, I think the Arcane Golem is uh, great uh, and it, it, even better with some additional combos. But I don't think we're going to see those combos in in the arena. And and actually, I can answer a question that we have about rarity gems and sure. rarity. So you can tell the rarity of a card. There's a, see these cards, they have a blue gem in the center of them, so that means that they're rare. Right. A previous pick, there was an epic pick that had the purple gems That's in the right. center of them. And if we ever see, get a legendary pick, there will be orange gems, but it's random. We may not get one at all. We That's have right. no idea. So I assume we're taking the Murloc. I, I'm okay with, I'm, I, let's go Murloc. All right, we're doing, we're doing oh, a Murloc Oh, but deck. it pains me, to, oh my goodness. Wow, we're getting a lot of rares and epics in this deck. We are pretty lucky. All right, so, uh, <laughs> Well, these are great early drops, and we're, we're running a little light on them, but this is an incredible six drop. And, and we're going to fill out that early drop selection with all of our Murlocs that we're going to randomly hopefully get. <laughs> That's true. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> so uh, you want to go with a six drop here? Charge uh, Divine uh, Shield. The Archer Commander is Charge and Divine Shield. I mean, often you drop it on the table, you run it into a guy, it kills it, and you still have a 4-3 out, whereas if you just drop a Divine Shield guy on the table, if it's a big one, often the enemy will just assassinate it or polymorph it right. or something like that, so you're not getting the full value. Argent Commander it is. 
and then we have the Sunwalker to, to complete it. Yeah, or another, another divine secret. shield minion. Oh, the and, Sunwalker and, is so good. And another rare pick. What the, what the heck is going That's on true. here? This is <laughs> We're great. We're a lot of rare picks. Uh, 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 I thought I'd answer a question. Sure. People are asking who we're playing against. Oh, sure. And and when we play against somebody, it'll be somebody in our quality assurance department, I think, that'll yeah, be... Normally, you play against another person who had done the arena uh, and has a, the same record as you. Yeah, yeah. So if we were one and one, we'd be matched against somebody else who was one right. and one. And your arena deck is going to last until you lose three times. So uh, at that point... You get some rewards based on how well you did, and uh, you can uh, uh, do the arena again. So back to this very difficult pick. So uh, I, I think uh, I mean, we just took a six drop. But it's the Sunwalker. Sun I Walker love that guy. Amazing. He but, just turns the games around. But the counter spell works well with our Karen Tor Mage. Yeah. And the Knife Juggler works well with all these Murlocs that we're going to get that haven't gotten yet. And it's cheap. That's and we do true. need some look at how many low drops we have, although we're kind of flat. Right now we're... Uh, I, 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 you, I cannot not take the Sunwalker. Click it. I love the Sunwalker. Let's do it. Oh, another uh, mirror entity, an Ascension Shieldmaster, and your opportunity to take that Worgen that you didn't take earlier. Yeah, but... That I didn't take earlier. But ever since we took the Karen Tor Mage, I, I keep leaning towards secrets. And, sure. And I don't know if Mirror Entity is the right pick. It <laughs> probably isn't, but, but I'm getting excited about that uh, pick. We're building a theme deck. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> we'll okay. Again. Now at this point, I uh, I do feel like we've got a lot of cards that cost three mana. Yeah. These are these are really solid one and two drops. I agree. This mirror entity. I agree. Yeah. I, and I could either go with the archer or the berserker. One of the things that's exciting about the berserker, since we are a mage, is it has enrage on it, which whenever it's damaged, it gets plus three attack. Right. We could drop it on the table and do one damage to it ourselves with our hero and, power. Right. With our hero power, because that's what the mage does. So the berserker is. Yeah. Even more dangerous in the hands of a mage. I, I like it. I like the archer too because you can combo with your hero power, but uh, to do two damage. Speaking of dealing damage to yourself, you could uh, ping the acolyte of pain here to deal damage to it and draw a card. Mm -hmm. oh, we could get another, another flame strike. Uh, it's tough because for me, I always want to take the extra flame strike, and it's looking a little bit like our deck is going towards the high mana curve, so we could uh, shift our deck from being a sort of balanced deck to a let's hold on, wipe the board with flame strikes. That's true. And we have the secrets to let us hold on, we have the flame strikes to let us hold on, and then we drop the Argent Commanders and Sunwalkers and Kodos and just run them down. Uh, all right, deal. Let's do it. Uh, well, the Brewmaster is very interesting if you've got, if we had taken like the Elven Archer, for example, we could have passed it back to our hand and played them again. We don't have a lot of battle cry guys. We could, we could, uh, we might get some later. The the Razorfin Hunter is strong, but also costs three mana. We have several three mana cards already, and uh, the Young Dragonhawk is really best when you can buff it and deal even more damage. Yeah, and we're already talking about not having a super aggressive early deck, just sure. trying to hang on, so the Dragonhawk uh, isn't so good for that. So I could see either the Razorfin, the Hunter, or the Brewmaster. Mm -hmm. well, I think we should take the the. Maybe the Brewmaster. Yeah, because you were just complaining about how many three drops we had. Yes, so I don't know if we want to add true. another three drop there. <laughs> Speaking of three drops, either we're taking one or we're taking the Angry Chicken. He's so angry. Well, the problem with Angry Chicken in a mage deck is there's not a great way to give him enough health that he could possibly be enraged. But 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 his anger is so great that it might <laughs> overcome that difficulty. Uh, you know what? Let's not take the Angry Chicken. I, was, I, I maybe was going out on a limb there. Uh, so the Imp Master... Not, uh, we don't have a lot of good combos with him. My control, my control tech. tech is interesting because if we are going for a, hey, we're going to just hang on early game and wait for the late game, then the mind control tech is great because if they get a bunch of minions out, we drop this and might be able to turn it around even sure. on turn three. Yeah, I like that. We've got a lot of three drops, but now we have one more. Speaking of three drops, here's some more of them. Uh, or we can take the Mana Worm. I, I'm thinking the Mana Worm right now because a 1-3 on turn one is great That's for true. hanging on for a couple of turns and just making it so that the game doesn't advance so we have time to get to our late game. And I like to imagine how my deck might play out when I'm when I'm doing the arena and I can imagine Mana Worm turn one, I don't know, some two drop, and then turn three I go Curator Mage who makes my secrets free. I play one, it buffs the Mana Worm. So I'm already planning out these moves in my head. I think Mana Worm fits in well with Yeah, let's deck. do it. And, and there's another question. Yeah. Uh, if you want to jump on the, how does rarity work, The sort of the balance of rarity? Because we mentioned that we are getting more rares, yeah. and, and we were surprised by oh, that. It's, it's totally random. Uh, there are some uh, slots in your deck that are going to at least be a rare, like the first card you pick is going to at least be a rare. Uh, and there's others that are also going to at least be rare, but any uh, slot could kind of upgrade to be an epic or a legendary, uh, and, and the rare slots could also upgrade to be 
an epic or a legendary. Uh, but there is some randomness, uh, and it's not necessarily going to be a better deck if you have more legendaries or epics or rares. Some of the commons are incredible. I think Flame Strike, and here we go, Fireball. Yeah, if I had a deck with cards. five or six Fireballs in it, which could happen, because sure. it, it randomly could happen, that would be a pretty strong deck. And exactly. we certainly, internally in some of our play, we had various uh, feedback that, oh, I built this great legendary arena deck, or some others was, yeah, I built a, a legendary deck in arena, and because the legendaries are so specific, right. it, it didn't end up being that, all that strong. And, and the common deck with a few rares and it ended up being a stronger exactly. deck. Uh, well, uh, here's a choice. If we're, if we're building the later game deck, Shield Bear helps us get there. I couldn't agree more, except I want to counter with Fireball. <laughs> I mean, uh, look at that guy. He's blowing somebody up. It's yeah, awesome. That's a, uh, that's a fried I, I, gnome in that art, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm torn, and we don't have a lot of four drops, and I agree the one drop might be better, although Fireball at four mana really can turn the game let's around. Just, let's just commit. Fireballs all day. Fireball! Uh -uh. Okay. okay. In, in, this, <laughs> in this case, I, I, I don't want to take a third fireball only because one of my favorite arena cards for a mage deck is in this pool, and that's Raging Worgen. While I think the Raging Worgen is so good, I do also have to say Fireball. <laughs> uh, uh, and, no, 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 no. I, you're totally right. I uh, mean, I, the Mogushan Warden, actually, if we're going to keep going a, a longer deck, might be the best choice. But Raging Worgen... You play him the next turn, you use your Fire Blast on him, now he's four attack and wind fury. I mean, he, he's awesome. It is, but only if you're playing in a pretty aggressive deck. That's true. And, I mean, and we we're, not, we're not going super aggressive other than, say, our three Murlocs. Uh, well, yeah, we got the Amani <laughs> Berserker and the Mana Worm. I think, we could, I think we could get away with it. If you want to try it because it's your favorite card, I just wanted you to know in the future, I, want, I reserve the right to say Fireball. All right, all right, we'll <laughs> see if we get any more of this. Hey, now, okay, so this is, this is, the Theater Arcanist is great the more secrets you had. And if we hadn't taken those Murlocs early on, uh, he'd be amazing right now. We do have two secrets still. He might, he might be worth it. And on the other hand, we could just take a secret. And, <laughs> That's and true. Actually, the Gadgets and Auctioneer is amazing in some decks. It's just we don't have enough spells, I think, to really support the full power of the Auctioneer. That's true. Yeah, we're we, a little bit lighter. We have some, and our spells are kind of expensive. With That's the Auctioneer, true. you don't want to have a, a spell-heavy deck. That's true. So I think we do go with the Arcanist or Vaporize. Um, I think we go with the Arcanist. He is super fun. And, and he can become... Well, let's look at what our secrets are. Our secrets are... Mirror, they're just uh, two mirror entities. Mirror so, entities. So, so they're not going to stick around too long. So really, to make the Arcanist work, we need to play the Arcanist and the mirror we entity. We should have taken either Counterspell or Spellbender. So really. it means it's a, a, a seven <laughs> cost, really, to get him out as a five five. Right. And we have to have both cards. So you'd rather take Vaporize? Is what you're I could go either. The, the Arcanist is more fun. I think the Vaporize is probably a better card. The second we take Arcanist, we're going to see a uh, secret after this. Okay, Arcanist. We've got to take... <laughs> It then, so we can see that next secret. Oh, it wasn't a secret. Hey, uh, these are these are good cards here. I actually like all three of these for different reasons. Leper Gnome is a, a really good early card if you're going to try and rush him down. Yeah, but we have not. I think he's still pretty good. He's pretty good, although we're backing away from that a little bit. Uh, so Frostbolt is just an incredible spell, and the Nightblade I, I like a lot just because of how much he does. He's a four-four, and he deals three to the enemy hero. So if you're if they, you know, managed to do a lot of damage and they put up a, 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 a guy with taunt or something, you could still do that last yeah. bit of damage. And we're trying to build a late game deck, and he's a five drop. And even though our plan is to have a late game deck, we don't actually have as many of right. the late game hitters as I think I'd like to have. So I kind of lean towards the Nightblade, even though the Frostbolt's more fun. Ah, well, here's a secret that might stick around for a while. Uh, at least until they attack. This is a very ice themed choice. I, I like it. I like how this worked out. <laughs> it, it's. A neutral minion, which is a frost elemental, yep. and two mage cards, which are frost. Yeah. Uh, so water elemental is great, and uh, I mean just just solid. Three six for four is already good. His power is great, but I, I given that we got the Kieran Tor mage and the Arcanist, I want to take the ice barrier. Okay. I'm uh, again. If we see fireball again, it's fireball. <laughs> it's also good in our theme to try and get to, towards the later game to get our flame strikes online. It gives us a little bit more. And it's also our theme of having as many three drops as possible, so it works with that theme as well. <laughs> well uh, hey, so oh. I, I wanted to answer a quick question. Sure. We have a question about, uh, do we keep our arena pools each time you play arena, or is it different time you each play arena? So your deck you use uh, until you lose three times. But every time we do the arena, you're going to see 30 different choices. They're gonna, all the cards are going to be totally different. Yeah, and, and you're playing against just everybody else who's playing arena at that specific right. time. So that's sort of the pool of players, and the pool of cards is specific until you lose three times. And then once you lose three times or retire it, then you're rewarded depending on how well you did. Right.
Uh, given that we've taken a uh, useful brewmaster, I want to take the novice engineer here because you could bounce him and, and uh, play him again and get an uh, extra card. I, I really like the novice engineer because it's a card that you drop for two. The enemy often has removal, yep. but they just don't want to use removal on the novice engineer, right, and exactly. so you get some hits in without them dealing with it. Uh huh, this is interesting. Well, this guy's that big hitter you were looking for, the frost elemental. Uh, I, I'm kind of leaning towards that. If we had, if we had ended up going with the uh, Gadgetan Auctioneer, I probably would have gone with the Arcane Intellect to sure. combo it there. But I think we don't have enough big hitters right. for our late game. Frost deck. Elemental. Uh, speaking of late game, maybe Polymorph here, maybe Frost Nova, maybe Fairy Dragon. Maybe even? Fairy. <laughs> I think Polymorph is the right choice here. We, we could use some targeted removal just in case we see something giant. On okay, the other side. Uh, and it's fun. You turn people into sheep. What could be? Uh, uh, Come on. So, so, uh, come on. What do you mean, come on? I, what come you on. The flame strike or the, or the murloc? The flame. Oh, well, it is a murloc, though. <laughs> we've got, we've got some murloc action already in this deck. He's a great murloc. But we could have three flame strikes in this deck. That's true. The, the, is that good or bad, though? <laughs> I don't know, but it would be three of them. I think, I think we should play it safe here. Take the bluegill warrior. He combos well with our murlocs, and he's just, he's good, in, in every phase of the game. I think. Okay, I, I agree. It's probably the better choice. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Ah. Uh, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out here and say I think Stormpike Commando is the best choice in this. In this That's trip. excellent because I was gonna say I would either go with the Owl or the Snapjaw. So <laughs> so we have perfect disagreement well, he, on this he's topic. He's the highest cost uh, minion, and we're going for that kind of late game strategy. But he doesn't last very long. He goes out there. He almost never even gets to swing. Well, but he at least gets to use his battle cry to deal two damage. So he always has an effect on the game. Maybe not a huge effect. We are we are light on. Uh, on five drops. I also, I think that for the people who are into this, the community would probably tell us to go with the owl. I know that the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's popular, sure. <laughs> and uh, he is good removal, but uh, we, we do have a lot of high-end removal already. Sure. No, and and I like the Snapjaw also because he's hard to get rid of. Sure. So he lets you sort of delay the game. We'll take the owl. You're probably right. Yeah, I'll probably best. Uh, well, hey, actually, if we're going to build a late game deck, Priestess of a Loon just works amazing in that type of deck. I totally agree. Because I mean, if you sometimes you kind of stumble into the late game, pretty low health, he be becomes a big hitter and gets you kind of above water. And I want to tell you that it pains me to agree with you 100% on this, <laughs> but I'm going to. Uh, so um, uh, we got a question. Oh, yeah. uh, can you get legendaries yeah. when you're participating in you the can. arena? They are rarer than epics and, and rares, uh, so they don't come up often, but absolutely you could get... Yeah, you could get more than one or more than two yeah. or whatever. It's, it's pretty unlikely, but it is possible. I did have a deck with three legendaries in it. You are the lucky one. I, I went 0-3 with that deck. I did not do very okay. well. Okay. <laughs> you are the lucky one who's a terrible player. <laughs> So uh, here, Mirror Image works great with a deck that wants to stall out and, and do things later in the game. It does, except, and I, I would agree with you, except that Mad Bomber is one of the best early game, like, deal with their cheap creature cards that is out there. Because they go turn one dude, you go turn uh, two Mad Bomber. And you have a huge chance of killing that guy with yeah. three hits. Of and the, then you have a 3-2 out already that yeah. they have to deal. So for me, delaying the game, my money's on the Mad Bomber. All right, we'll do the Mad Bomber. He's fun. And... Oh, oh, yeah, it was only a two drop, so we didn't. Oh, oh. this is tough. So, what, which Murloc? ones are you thinking? Oh, uh, well, what are you torn between? The Blizzard and the Murloc. Okay, that's exactly what I'm torn between. <laughs> and I'm going to stop doing that because it's <laughs> paining me to agree with you. But it's the Blizzard and the Murloc. Blizzard all is the way. so good for our deck, because it, it, especially because we could Blizzard maybe turn six if we're, if, if we're in danger and then follow up with the Flame Strike turn seven. Yeah, and I was going to look at Blizzard and say, and we're pretty light on five drops, but then I looked at the Murloc and went, we're pretty light on one drops, and it's actually That's rougher true. to be light on one drops than five drops. Oh, Although the Murloc, if he's our first one drop, he often can be not a great Murloc until That's you true. get that, that synergy going. So I, 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 I like, lean towards the Blizzard. Yeah, the Blizzard is so strong in this deck. And that was our last choice. So this is, uh, this is our full uh, arena deck now over here on the right side. Uh, if there's any other questions uh, that... Uh, uh, you guys have we can we can answer and put that. I think we answered them while we were doing the, the run though. So Absolutely. Let's just jump right in and start playing. Uh, this is your key here, and it starts oh, out as a yeah. novice key. Uh, and every game that we win, the key is going to upgrade and get uh, uh, turn into a better key uh, for every win. So uh, at the end of uh, the arena, uh, when you lose three times, you'll use that key to unlock a chest and get better rewards based on the key that you have. And, and, and at the end of our run today, we are definitely going to be unlocking a chest, so we'll talk more about the uh, reward system and all that right. when we get to that point. So I, I hit play, we're gonna match again.